Well, the Packers have hired Joe Barry, um, and everybody's pretty upset. <laughs> Look, I, I, I don't have anything to give you to calm you down. I don't. I, I went through every single thing that he's done, and, and as far as what's been put on paper, there's nothing. The only thing you could possibly put your finger on and say, hey, that's impressive, would be Corey Littleton. Um, and yeah, I'm talking about teams, I'm talking about players, I'm talking about all that. There's nothing. Um, and that's not meant to discourage you, it's just, if we're going to look at this hire strictly from the standpoint of how good have you done in your past, we're not going to be very happy. There's nothing in his past. Um, the point is though, and I remember this when we hired Matt LaFleur and it, it sort of infuriated me. Because I didn't want Matt LaFleur here. I went through a list of candidates. I didn't like very many of them, to be fair. There were only one or two that I thought, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I was kind of nervous, right? There were not a lot of very good candidates. That was even the case at that time. People saying, this is a bad year to be firing coaches because there's not a lot of real promising candidates out there. Matt LaFleur was one of the names, but most people looked at it and thought, nah, he's been kind of shadowed by Sean McVay. And then again, the biggest thing, the biggest problem I had is when he left, Sean McVay left the system and did his own thing. The Rams stayed good. The Titans got worse on offense. They went backwards. They went from like 25th to like 30th. It, it went worse. And so you look at it and say, okay, Sean McVay is the thing that makes it work. Matt LaFleur is not. You could look at our offensive coordinator. So he had no success. He comes over here. He has success. But the thing that upset me when we hired Matt LaFleur is Brian Gutekunst sat down. They did their big press conference and he's, they keep talking about his personality and he's just a right fit and he's what we're looking for here and he's just got the right energy and he's got the right attitude and everything just kind of felt like, I don't know, he seems like a guy, a cool guy that I'd like to work with for the next 10 to 15 years. And it really kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And after about five, 10 minutes into the press conference, somebody finally says, does it bother you the fact that the Titans were kind of bad? Like, did that ever cause you to have any pause and think, hey, Maybe this is a bad idea. And the reaction from, from Brian Gutekunst made it very clear that they don't view things the way we view things. We simply look at how did you do in the past, right? In other words, here's the team. When you show up, I want to see this happen, right? That's it. If, if that happens, then you're a good hire. If you get hired and it either stays like this or goes like this, you're a bad hire. That's how we view it. But if you go back and watch that press conference, Brian Gutekunst stared at the, at the questioner like he just started taking his clothes off. He just, like, uh, not really. I mean, literally, that's what he said. He said, not really. And he went through a couple different things. He's like, you know, um, their quarterback, Mariota, had uh, injury in his hand that was so bad he could hardly throw. And, you know, they had some other things going on. So, no, I don't, I don't really care about the production. Like, who cares about that? I'm, I'm trying to tell you he brings the right thing that we need here in Green Bay. We don't like that as fans even though that's what makes sense. And I've used this analogy on my podcast, and it's a little stupid, but it does make sense. Not every team is, is the same. Every team has different challenges and different things that they need. Everybody has it up here. All these guys know stuff. If you gave Mike Pettin, Barry, um, any number of defense, any one of the defensive coordinators that we had lined up, Wade Phillips, doesn't matter. Anybody out there that's been a defensive coordinator, you could probably give this to a handful of, of uh, high school defensive coordinators, and they could pass these tests as far as what to do, situational type things, whatever. They know. It's not about that. Um, it's just about we have very specific needs. When we let Mike Pettin go, it was for a specific reason, and, and Matt LaFleur laid those things out. We have a very good defense, but what we lacked was aggression. We were too passive, and so we need to take the talent, and we need to, to be more aggressive. So we need a different style of defense. We need somebody with a different level of energy and a different way of doing things. And so if we can find the person that checks those boxes, and, and the thing is, Nothing about those boxes has anything to do with how good he did at, at coaching up Washington. Has zero to do with that. Nothing. We need to know, I, I need a guy that can do A, B, C, and D. This guy can do A, B, C, and D. And somebody comes over and says, hey, what about X, Y, 2? What about it? Like, well, he couldn't do that. 
We don't need that here in Washington. I don't need him to come here and make Washington from 2015 a better football team. That that doesn't make sense, right? I don't need him to make the linebackers for the Rams better in 2018. That doesn't make sense. I need somebody. And again, I know my team. I know what we need. I understand all these things. So we need A, B, C, and D. And the person that can do A, B, C, and D best, I believe, gives us the best chance to take what we have and make it better. Because we have the pieces. We absolutely have the pieces. I didn't even give my silly analogy, but we have everything we need. It's just about somebody putting them in the right spots. And and I guess I'll give my analogy. Um, it's, it's sort of the coach is sort of like toppings to your food. Mike Pettin was kind of like salt on bacon. It didn't really do anything. It didn't make it better. Maybe made it a little bit worse. But, I mean, it was just he didn't put the guys in the right position to make it better. Then you have guys that just make everything worse, right? It's like ketchup on cake. Now, ketchup is great if you put him in the right spot, right? If, if Joe Barry is ketchup and he went and worked for a couple different teams that were cake and spaghetti, not great. But the Green Bay Packers possibly are cheeseburgers. That is great. So again, if we think about that analogy and everything I just said, the Green Bay Packers are looking at it and saying, we got this food here. We got a, a meat patty. We got cheese. We got bun. We got lettuce. We got onions, tomato. What else do we need to make this really pop? Granny ketchup is a little bit, eh, doesn't really take it over the top, but we're, we're whatever, right? It's a, He's the cheese then, okay? I don't know, but cheese is good on spaghetti. Just shoddy. Just let me, all right? So so, so when people come to him and say, but what about the fact that, that ketchup was over there and he made the cake taste worse? What kind of a reaction is Matt LaFleur, Lafleur supposed to give? I don't care. Like that, that yeah, so what? Like, what? <laughs> I don't get it. But again, that doesn't compute to us because we just we need answers. We need closure. We need clarity. And I'm not listen. None of this means he's going to be a good defensive coordinator. I'm not advocating for him. I don't like that. These things don't line up well. But you know who's who, who things did line up well for Mike Pettin. Mike Pettin. It didn't mean anything. So what if it lined up well for Mike? Pet- Mike Pettin's never had a defense worse than than top five in DVOA in his entire career. He is a, a legitimate mastermind, and we're lucky to be able to have this guy. All those things are true. Didn't happen here. Why? Because it doesn't matter. It's different. It's a different era. Different schemes. Different players. Different everything. It doesn't matter. Again, doesn't mean he's going to be good. This might be a failure. I don't know. This is a it's especially a high risk play from Matt LaFleur because the bad record means if things don't go well, everyone's going to look at you and go, "Yeah, dummy, no kidding." He oh and 16 Lions. I mean, duh. By the way, go look at the 0 and 16 Lions roster. Tell me who the best player on these these teams were. He hasn't had a lot of good players in the past to work with. Um, again, I, I don't like the fact that I can't point to one thing outside of Corey Littleton, and, and if we want to run with that, fine. But I can't point to one thing that um, shows that when he shows up, things got better. But all I can really do is, is look at it from the standpoint of there's a list of things that needed to happen. I don't know what any of those things were. I don't, outside of general things like aggression. Okay, whatever. I'm sure Petten came in and was supposedly going to be aggressive. Whatever. But there are more specific things that I don't know what they are. And there were private meetings and private discussions as well as information that Matt LaFleur already knew because it's kind of a inner circle where coaches talk to coaches and they work with these guys and those guys. And, you know, Sean McVay and he are really good friends, so they kind of talked about Barry and they know all these different things, right? They, they talk a lot and they work with different things. And so, uh, you know, it just... We're not really, I don't like that I can't specifically see anything, but it doesn't mean anything. At the end of the day, it comes down to Matt needs to do a good job of identifying what the issues are and finding the right person to fix those issues. He believes he's done that. And as I just got done saying on Twitter recently, all these questions, every single negative thing that you can say also becomes a positive. Every single one of those things also becomes a positive. Why? If you just answer the question, there's a reason. What about how bad things were in Washington? Look at how bad things were in Detroit. 
Look at the linebackers that he coached. Look at the fact, how about all the other defensive coordinators? How about Mike Pettin? How about all these different guys? The fact of the matter is Matt LaFleur said by hiring him that despite all those things, this is the best available guy. Meaning there's something to the contrary to counteract every single one of those things that gets him that excited. It reminds me of the draft when you look at um, a guy like MVS getting drafted, what was it, the fifth round? You look at his height, you look at his speed, he's such a rare human being. Why did he fall in the fifth? Because there are negative attributes to the opposite side of it that we can't see. And the fifth round value tells you that. And it's why people can't let it go that he's going to be this great player because, well, look at the attributes. It doesn't matter. The fifth round value shows you that there is something on the opposite side of the speed and height that's negative to that degree to drop the value to a fifth round pick because just based on height and speed, he's a, a early first round pick. Conversely, if you look at a guy like Devontae Adams, who has nothing interesting about him, he's not tall, he's not fast, he had none of those attributes, he's what, six foot? 200 pounds, just as boring of a prospect as you can get, but he's a second-round pick. Or look at CeeDee Lamb, for example, if you want a first-round pick. What is it about CeeDee Lamb that makes him better than MVS? He's not as fast. He's not as tough. Six foot four runs in the four threes? Are you kidding me? How is CeeDee Lamb better? Exactly. The, the value tells you that there's something on the opposite side, outside of these things that you can see, that is that much better that makes CD Lamb up here and MVS down here. And just because you can't necessarily see it, and granted, if you watch tape, you probably can see it or whatever, fine, but you're not watching tape of, of coaches. That's the point. There's a whole bunch of stuff we can't see. There's a whole bunch of other var value variables that we can't see that are only being fleshed out in these interviews. And beyond that, the fact that this guy is constantly getting tons of opportunities despite not really being able to elevate things. And, and understand, that's one of the things about football. It's so intertwined. Everything is so intertwined. You can't just come in and fix everything by yourself. You can't take horrible football players and just make them elite football players because you're such an amazing coach. That doesn't exist. That's not a thing. You can do the best that you can do with the tools that you have. Same with quarterback. You can only do so much. If you're a running back, you're a dominant runner. It would be like judging a running back based on how good the, the team's record is that he's played for. You know, how good is Barry Sanders? <laughs> I mean, have you seen the Lions? Or, or Megatron. Megatron is a terrible wide receiver. Look how bad the Lions were. If he was good, why wouldn't the Lions better? It's the same thing. And again, that doesn't mean he's going to be a good defensive coordinator. It just means we don't have the information we need to make the right assessment. The things that we would like to see, we can't see, and that makes it scary, and it's okay to be scared, and it's okay to be skeptical, and it's okay to say, I'm not on board with this. you got a long way to go to prove this to me. That's all fine. But the fact of the matter is, we don't know anything other than Matt LaFleur talked with this guy and assessed the situation and said, here's our needs, here's his talents, and they fit together great. And despite the fact that you got guys like Jerry Gray, who have been around since forever, I mean, he was a defensive coordinator a very long time ago. He's been in the league forever. He's done great things for DBs, our DBs, their DBs. You can see exactly what you want to see. You see the success. He shows up and the safeties are great. Minnesota, every safety that went in there was dominant. He comes to the Green Bay Packers and, and elevates the, the duo that we have instantly. So again, based on what we want, he's a perfect candidate. Matt LaFleur sat down and said, no, 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 no. this guy. Joe Barry, that's the guy that's going to make it better. Will he? I don't know. We don't know. We, I have to sit here and do this video because this is what we do. And I wish I could give you something more insightful than I don't know, but that's the reality. The simple fact of the matter is the right reaction to this is I'm very skeptical based on the fact that he's never been able to elevate anyone ever. However, I'm intelligent enough to realize that his past record doesn't necessarily reflect what's going to happen in the future. And so we're going to have to wait and see, but I'm not all overly optimistic. That's a completely rational opinion to have. Saying, I think he's going to be great, or I think he's going to be trash, you can say it, you can say whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But don't take it too seriously, right? Just like the draft. I get super jacked up about certain prospects. That's fine. There's other prospects, it's like, oh, I don't want this guy. You know, I just, oh, come on, not him. 
but but don't take that too seriously. I know that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I, I just have fun with the draft. It doesn't matter. Speaking of, we got a, a group mock draft. Check the video. It's I'm going to do a live stream. Just stick around. You'll see it. I want you to be involved in a group. We're all going to do it together. It's going to be great. Um, I think that's it. I, that's I, Again, I got nothing else for you, man. That's it. Um, we're, more information will come out. I look forward to seeing some of the interviews with him. Um, I mean, little things. He's he's coached Preston in the past. I don't know if that's going to make all that much of a difference. Uh, we have to see what he does as far as the the position coaches, which is kind of a dangerous thing because if he fires all these guys that are fantastic, and I'm sure Jerry Gray is not going anywhere. He's not going to be allowed to fire Jerry Gray. But we have some other great coaches on the defensive side of the ball. I like our defensive line coach. I like our uh, outside linebacker coach, our edge rusher coach, our safety coach. But if he starts firing a bunch of guys and bringing in a bunch of other guys and the defense is terrible, now we just lost all this talent. So we'll see how that all fleshes out. Um, it'll be interesting, but um, we'll see how it goes. And uh, welcome Joe Barry to the uh, frozen tundra. Hopefully you can get this thing turned around. And we have no reason to doubt Matt LaFleur and Brian Gutekunst because they've done some fantastic things in the past. So... Anyways, that's all I got. Uh, again, be sure to stick around in about 50 minutes. We're doing that live draft. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification so you don't miss any of those fun things. I'll catch you next time.